is the participation in the world of ideas. Yeah, let's talk about ideas. Tell the story. He will know. And is it like a, a puzzle? Is it a puzzle? Go right away to the first one. See poor body. It's a program of aspiration. It gives them a chance to hope and dream that someday they could actually find a role in this world. It's an affirmation that you were right. Whether it was singing or dancing or acting, you knew that you were good enough to get there and people recognized it and acknowledged it. It changed me completely. It was an amazing experience and it still is with me. It was really pivotal for me. It's so important to run across people who can inspire you in different ways. This is a one room building. That is a one room building. Make one. Those become like the building blocks that later create who you are and solidify the journey that your work takes you on. Awesome light. I know you're tired. Being recognized on a national level is an astonishing reinforcement of your dreams and your desires. Stop haunting me now. The Young Arts Program lets the entire country know the phenomenal talent that's out there. It put the cement on my dirt path just set it in stone that this is where you go, this is where you should be, and so go out there and do it. People are ordinary when they walk. When they dance, they're a little crazy. They become mad. The madness of art. Is that not everything? Is that not everything? What people have to understand is that arts are as central to the need of the human being as any other subject. This is a public statement of a direction you want to take your blood and guts and your bones and your life and your imagination. It's our future. That's what arts do. They express the emotions of a culture. Yeah. What young arts does is says, this is who you are. There you go. You're an artist. And this is how your life is going to unfold. Fools rushing, but here I am. Young Arts really changed my life. I wouldn't be where I am, who I am, or do what I'm doing without the direction that they provided. It changed my life. Changed my life.
heard there was a sacred chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? And it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composed. Saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to the kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. It's not a cry that you hear at night. It's not somebody you see in the light. It's a cold and it's a broken heart. Holly.
I cry I pretend I hope I
Thank you so much for coming tonight and supporting us and our art. It's thanks to you that this night and Young Arts Week is made possible. So thank you so much.
We'd like to recognize one woman in particular tonight who's out there working every day to make sure that we're able to pursue our dreams not only during Young Arts Week, but for years and years beyond. Please welcome to the stage President and CEO of the National Foundation for Advancement in the Arts, Christina DePaul. and what it does to um, all the senses. I just want to cry and laugh, and my insides are just um, singing. Welcome to our 30th anniversary. This is a really, really special week for us. My name is Christina DePaul, and I'm the president and CEO of this incredible foundation. There are so many themes that we talk about when we start to conceive um, these shows. And this year we talked about evolution because we are changing. We are a growing organization, 30 years now, and we are growing and growing big. So the themes are evolution and creativity. Wow. <laughs> so our organization continues and continues to impact more students. Tonight, you will meet 148 of our final, finalists who will go out there. They're tonight youngsters, and they're going to come back stars. And tonight, you also saw these alumni, and they never cease to amaze me. I watched them come together. And what you don't realize is they came together just a few days ago, and this is what they created. That's Young Arts, that's the talent that we have, and our incredible director who works with us, she says each time, never can she believe what happens in the magic in a few days. Heidi Marshall put this together. Thank you, Heidi, wherever you are. Not only is she a great director, but she's a great mentor and has become great friends with all of these wonderful alumni. So I hope now you have an idea of what we're about. Everyone says, what is this about? And I heard all kinds of things when I first came. What do you think we are? It's a bunch of kids that dress up in bald gowns and they sing opera. It's a bunch of this. It's, a bu it's not at all who we are. This is what we are. We recognize the best students in the country, and we give them experiences that start right here in Miami that they will never forget in their lives. And they, they'll tell you, and they'll ta they tell us all the time, never have they come together and felt what they feel in this week. And that's what we're about. So thank you to the board, uh, to Lynn, to the Arisons who started this wonderful foundation 30 years ago. Every night we've had performances here, and we have watched talent that just fills our insides. I have cried watching films. I have laughed watching our theater. Students, I have watched, I mean, so many of you were with me, including tonight. This is being live streamed, and this is a new thing that we're doing, thanks to my brilliant uh, communication staff. But we can put this performance out there. Every night, the students who are winners, their parents have been watching, their high schools have been watching. And what I heard today is that every continent, I think besides Antarctica has been watching our performances. So Antarctica, I hope you're watching tonight. <laughs> the other wonderful thing that we did is yesterday over 1,000 Miami-Dade students got to see the dress rehearsals. And we've never done that before. Usually they come to the Gale, our alumni, and this is their first performance. And so they got to perform two times to 1,000 students in Miami-Dade, which is a wonderful, our um, Young Arts Miami program, thanks to the Knight Foundation. And so they got to practice, and I heard they had standing ovations, and you can see why. <laughs> uh, 
We are the only organization in the country that does this. We're not just about recognition, we're about the experiences. We mentor, and we mentor in nine disciplines, and I'm someone that believes that there should never be boundaries. Ernest, our hip hop artist, first hip hop artist, uh, to become a presidential scholar is now a film student. Um, we have students who came in and they were theater students and they're now getting their films into Sundance Film. That's what Young Arts does. There should never be walls when you're an artist. And when you are as talented as our young artist, you can do anything. And you can put on a performance like you just saw this evening. That's what we are. I really want to thank all of you for being here tonight. This is a very special year for us because this is, marks our 30th and this marks a new evolution and a new era for us. Your presence allows us to continue to improve and advance our program and to reach more and more young artists and that's our new goal is we want to reach more than 148 to 150 students. We want to use this talent and put it out there for the rest of the country to be advocates to be young artists, to be behind the stage, to be in front of the stage, to be running organizations like I have the honor of doing. I want to give special thanks to SunTrust, our presenting sponsor. <laughs> the historic Alfred I. DuPont Building, who is our presenting venue sponsor. Venue sponsor. Our gala leadership, Marion Davis and David Parker and Sandy and Steve Moss. And so many more friends who are out there, all the educators, all the parents, all of our wonderful panelists. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now to continue our celebration. Tonight we honor four very, very special individuals, each of whom has contributed and made a significant contribution to the arts in this country. First honoree, Bill T. Jones, will be accepting the Arison Award. The Arison Award named... <laughs> I actually can't think of a better person to describe young arts than Bill T. Jones. He is a pluralistic artist. The Arison Award named for the late visionary and entrepreneur and philanthropist Ted Arison, founder of Carnival Cruise Lines, who with his wife, Lovely Lynn, created the National Foundation for Advancement in the Arts and the Young Arts Program to nurture and support artists. This award is given annually to an individual who's had considerable influence on the development of young artists. Honored, we are so honored tonight to have three past Arison awardees. The, honor, the honorees and awardees who have joined us tonight as we honor Bill are Jacques D'Amboise, Mikhail Brezhnikov, and Lee Vallman. Thank you for being here with us tonight. We're gonna take a look at this year's Arison Award recipient, Bill T. Jones, and I want you to take special note that the films were produced by Young Arts alumni. Hi, my name is Michael Butler, and I'm a 2010 Cinematic Arts finalist. Looking back at my experience at Young Arts Week, I've realized what an important impact it has made in my life in terms of encouragement to continue my artistic work and the formation of long-term relationships. Even now, my connection with Young Arts continues as I have been given the honorable task of showcasing the work of Arison Award winner Bill T. Jones, one of the world's best dancers and choreographers. He has received numerous honorary doctorates and received the MacArthur Genius Award. Here's a showcase of some of his work. Look how beautiful his legs are, how nice and long they are. 
if he could even get more out of those legs, give him something to do, you know, work with it. You see how long he did? Make, maybe that's just walk, right? You know what I mean? Work his body, work his body, pull out of it what you want. participation in the world of ideas. Yeah, let's talk about ideas. Right now, it's about drawing on the floor. Mm -hmm. Or is it about your gestures, you know? Right. You, you, I think it's... You, you take charge now, because we can go a lot of different, it's all interesting. Yeah. What do you want to do? Now let's make the most interesting picture you can between these three. This is your tableau. This is interesting, it's strong, but if I said conversational to you, I'm just now trying to understand the opening moment. They, nothing that they've done has been this eccentric. So what is it? How do you get the eccentricity that you have here to work for these other guys, and they don't, they don't all have to do the same walking. Uh -huh. That's a choreographer's problem, right? Is this a dance piece or is this a theater piece? Is it a solo moment? Is it the three of them coming together? Is it like a, a puzzle? Is it a puzzle? There, now, right here, God, beautiful moment. Now, that moment. And being the focus for Can just a moment. Hearing the text through your body, it was very exciting. Of their attention so that I can maybe make a difference. Hit a spark. Say something that they have not heard before. Maybe that bothers them, but I know it's going to get into them. Because I know it affect, that happened to me, you know? Yeah, I know. I want to be part of the discourse. T. Jones, I want to talk ideas with you. <laughs> to present the Arison Award this evening, I want to invite the beautiful and most talented Lee Volman, acclaimed actress and director of our 2010 Arison Award recipient, and James Rasmussen, the president of SunTrust and a wonderful member of my board, to the stage. Please come out, Eve and Jim. Thank you. I am so honored to be able to be part of giving this prize away. I've heard someone say that the body is the most beautiful creation of nature. And uh, Bill, you have really showed us that in all your work. Within you, Bill, all that is art lives. The writer, the dancer, the choreographer, the music, the actor, the director. You have invited us into the world as you see it, so that we can go forth from there, enchanted by your work, and with enhanced awareness of the possibilities of life. Dear Bill, with you, we know what and who we are. I don't believe that you ever tried to be mainstream, although to experience your art, to be beckoned by your magic, allows us to know what life could be. I've heard you speak, and I've seen you dance and create, and I felt 
privileged because I could be part of your troop, the magical troop, the journey of art that tells us that we are part of this. We may change the world we live in if we are part of this. That there is hope in the most hopeless situations, that life is worth living, and that if we feel that life seems unfulfilling, we can watch artists like you and know there are possibilities that we might not even know that we can touch. Bill, what you have done and will do as a man of vision is to make us dream about owning what, did, what we did not even know we could own. Be for a moment what we are not. To be mortal and at the same time forever. There is magic to your art, Bill. It has been said that true artistics are sacrament makers, creators of emphasized beauty, and that they will invite us into the world they see so that we can go forth from that world enchanted by their magic with an enhanced awareness of the possibilities of life. Thank you, Bill, for giving us the best way to make the impossible possible. I'm very full tonight. Um, thank you very much to the young artists and all of those persons who came out tonight. Do, do you know this one? It says, uh, the human shape is a ghost, sometimes pure light, sometimes cruel, struggling wildly to, to release the image held tightly within itself. The human shape is a ghost, sometimes pure light, sometimes cruel, struggling wildly to release the image held tightly within itself. If I could only believe that every day, moments like this, seeing the beauty of these young people, I'm thinking also, do you know that, that evil, that very smart Oscar Wilde, who said, the youth of America is its oldest tradition? <laughs> well, the young people will help us grow up. You help us grow up. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Liv. Thanks, all of you. Let's be brave and go forward. Washington will be accepting the Alumni Award this year. And I have had the wonderful opportunity of meeting Carrie earlier uh, this year when we were on an educational panel together for Americans for the Arts with some of our alumni talking about arts and getting it back into the schools and the problem with America by taking arts away. And Carrie is an incredibly big and important uh, ambassador for the arts and an advocate. 
This award was established in 2006. It represents our support of talented young artists and symbolizes our continued commitment and um, to these alumni, which you saw this evening. I love bringing them together when they've never met and they come and today Carrie did incredible things with our students in a master class. This award is granted to a Young Arts winner and an alumnus or alumna in recognition of noteworthy contributions and professional achievements to his or her chosen art form. The award itself is a piece that, of art that is designed and created by noted international sculptor John Henry, who also happens to be a board member of ours. Thank you, John. Now let's take a look at this year's honoree, Carrie Washington. was a mechanism to not only express myself but also those who didn't have a voice. And I was oftentimes uncertain about my future in cinematic arts until Young Arts, beginning with Miami Arts Week, truly changed my life. And now as a student at Harvard University, not a single day goes by that I don't think about the opportunities, love, and support that I was provided with and just how incredibly much I miss it. I'm Shimo Gobaba and I'm a 2010 Young Arts Cinematic Arts finalist. It was my honor to create a short presentation about a prominent fellow Young Arts alumnus, Carrie Washington. Through her work in numerous critically acclaimed films and accomplishments from organizations ranging from the NAACP to President Barack Obama's Committee on the Arts and Humanities, it is no secret that Carrie merits recognition from Young Arts. Here's a brief highlight of Carrie's work as an artist. Enjoy. What's wrong? You didn't think you'd see me again? No, it's not that. I'm just surprised. Wow, you, you look good, Nikki. Thanks. Come on. Can I ask a question? It's personal. Go right ahead. Why are you still married? Still fine. Fat. Hey, Jack. You can invite me in. I mean, you never really seem like the marrying type, and now even though you say you're happy, I don't think you are. <laughs> Just playing with you. Who the hell are all these women? Relax, they're friends of mine. What kind of friends? Lesby friends, all right? This was fun. We should do this again. And you leave your boxers on the floor and you turn the channel to Sports Center when I'm watching the news. They are all highly educated, highly successful businesswomen. They have achieved the American dream. Almost. most valuable player. He was so proud this day. Until you hey, came home. You a reporter? You want to do a story on me? Let's see. My mom's dead. She was a junkie. She got shot in the head in a parking lot. My dad, I never knew him. I got two half-brothers. I grew up in East L.A. Now, what do you think about that? Me, this is going to be all right. Seemed to me like you got all the choices in the world. <laughs> God gave you the gift to sound like anybody you please. Nicholas, you have to find a way to get out. Don't be so I believe it <laughs> okay. is you I have to thank for the t shirt.
to present this year's award gives me great pleasure to introduce Desmond Richardson, who is our 2010 alumni honoree. Desmond was a 1986 winner in dance and a presidential scholar in the arts. He was principal dancer for Alvin Ailey in the American Ballet Theater and is the co-founder and artistic director of Complexions Contemporary Ballet, and he just joined our board. Desmond Richardson. Thank you, Christina. How you guys doing? You having fun? Absolutely. This is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant evening. And as a former presidential scholar in 1986 uh, finalist in the arts, it just gives me great pleasure, really, really great pleasure, to introduce Miss Kerry Washington. Come on up to the stage. <laughs> It is so trippy to be here. <laughs> I feel like yesterday I was here for a week, and it was a week that absolutely transformed my life. I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching the other alumni, um, I'm not quite sure why Desmond and I weren't invited to be part of that performance, but um, when, <laughs> when I was watching the alumni, I felt like anything is possible. Didn't you just feel like anything could be accomplished? And I, I just want to say that why this organization is so important is because I think that the National Foundation for the Advancement of the Arts allows for that feeling. It allows for the feeling of possibility because what's different about the arts, what's different about creativity in, in the learning of our young people is that in so many other parts of the education process, and, and this is actually an idea that I discovered in conversation with some of the other arts alumni, you know, in so many other parts of the education experience, you are regurgitating facts. Somebody explains something to you and you explain it back, or you memorize something, or you follow a path of thinking that was discovered decades or centuries ago, and you just copy that path of thinking. But in the arts, what's different about the arts is that you have to be a problem solver. You have to be an innovator because no one has your hand and no one can tell you how to figure out how to hold the string of C and E at the same time. And no one has your vocal cords. No one can tell you how to reach a high F in that moment with your lung capacity and your vocal cords. You have to solve that problem. No one has the length of bicep muscle that you have they can't tell you exactly how to make that happen. You have to make that happen. As an actor, nobody has my particular emotional history to tell me how to make a moment real or not real. So every student that you see up here and each one of you students in the audience, remember that you are a problem solver. You are an innovator. You are a creator. And that makes you brilliant because because your intelligence is all your own. So I just, I thank you so much, the National Foundation of the Arts, for making me believe in the possibilities of my own dreams and making me believe that anything is possible. I thank all of you donors who are so generously giving to the problem solvers of the world, because God knows we have enough problems, but with your help, not only in the arts, but in disciplines across the board, because so many of these students are studying physics and they're studying disciplines outside of their art, but their art makes them better in their discipline. So by you supporting this program, you're supporting a world with fewer problems because we're going to solve them. So thank you. <laughs> I'm 
wondering if Carrie will write my speeches. <laughs> the Young Arts Leadership Award, established last year, 2010, recognizes recipients in the support of arts organizations and the arts in America. There's cultural arts in every city and in every state. It thrives due to the support of leaders, such as the leader we're going to introduce to you tonight. Without them, most arts initiatives could not flourish. The Leadership Award acknowledges the vital impact these individuals and their organizations create. This year's honorees each stand on their own for the countless contributions they bring to their communities. Now let's take a look at this year's Leadership Award recipients, my good friend from Washington, D.C., Michael Kaiser, and Adrian Arsh. Good evening, everybody. My name is Thurman Green, the young man on the screen right now, and I'm a cinematic arts alumnus from 2008. And I made the video that you're about to see for tonight's recipients of the Leadership Awards, Michael Kaiser and Adrian Arst. And these are two amazing individuals who, as a young artist myself, I'm very grateful and thankful for. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. What I've learned and been amazed by is the creativity and the resilience of arts leaders and artists across the country. There's a tremendous interest in and desire for art in every community in this country. I believe that the biggest challenge we're facing the arts in the United States and around the world relates to the lack of training available for arts managers. We spend billions of dollars to train singers, dancers, actors, pianists, but we spend so little money to train people who have to employ them, who have to raise the money to support them, who have to build the audiences. We have a number of programs at our institute. They include a one-year fellowship program for arts managers. They are traditionally American arts managers. We have a summer institute for international arts managers. We have training seminars for board members because we believe it's very important to train board members as well as staff members. We have an intern program here for college age students. Um, we have our arts in crisis program that has offered free consulting to troubled arts organizations across the country. I've been on a 69 city tour across the United States that's part of the arts in crisis project. And even though we have this terrible recession, it isn't going to stop artists from creating. My board chair, Jim Dubin, and I have been attending um, some of Michael's leadership courses, and yesterday, as we were in the middle of our week, we felt it important that we were there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Michael. It was very terrific. This year's award is an interesting award because it was created through a collaboration by one of our young um, 2010 winners and a world-class Miami glass sculptor, Terry Lundas. To present the Leadership Award this evening, is Miami's guy, Dennis Scholl, Vice President of Arts at the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation. Please, Dennis, come to the stage. Before I launch into this, I think sometimes these guys make it look so easy that uh, we forget to say thank you to Christina and her incredible staff. So please join me in doing that. So 
So I'm honored to be here tonight to present this 2011 Young Arts Leadership Award. And I was fortunate enough to be here last year when the first award went to my friend, my mentor, and my boss, <laughs> Alberto Barguin and the Jonas and James L. Knight Foundation. I don't know what you can say about tonight's recipients, really. They have each in their own way played the role of patrons, but also literally saving the arts over the last uh, number of years. Adrian Arsh has done it over and over and over. You're in Miami, and Miami knows well from her $30 million donation to our community's Performing Arts Center, as well as her recent gift to create the Adrian Arsh Music the Musical Theater Fund at the Kennedy Center. But the funny thing is when Adrian and I are together and we are friends, we, we don't talk about that. We talk about contemporary art. Uh, if you haven't seen her Chris Martin bell sculpture in, in her home, you really, that's, that's something not to be missed. Uh, and it truly reflects her deep uh, passion for the arts. Uh, most recently, Adrian supported a program created by tonight's co-honoree, Michael Kaiser, the president of the Kennedy Center. As you saw in the video, the program Arts in Crisis provided free, confidential arch management advice to struggling U.S. nonprofit groups. Through it, they reached 650 art groups during the financial crisis. And Michael wasn't done there. He then hit the road, went to all 50 states, visited 69 cities, and I had the pleasure of hosting him when he was in Miami, and we did a, a bit of a panel discussion. We moderated a discussion in front of 250 arts educators. I just heard uh, today that he's taken off for Africa soon, taking a show on the road again. And today is actually his 10th anniversary at the Kennedy Center. I'm proud to say also that Knight is also funding his year-long capacity building program that poor Jim and Christina had to get up and be there at 8 o'clock for. But some of you out in the audience were there too, and we thank you for that. The seminar started yesterday in Miami, and over 200 attendees, and all I got yesterday and today were emails saying how dazzled people were by Michael and what he brings to arts management. Michael's book, The Art of the Turnaround, lays out 10 rules for turning around arts organizations. But it is the first two rules that best apply to the honorees tonight. Rule one, someone must lead. And rule two, the leader must have a plan. And I can't think of a better way to describe the thoughtful, impassioned efforts of Adrian Arsh and Michael Kaiser. I'd like to invite Rob Barlick, who'll be accepting the award on behalf of Adrian, and I'm guessing he's not gonna wear one of those amazing red ball gowns that Adrian's always wearing, and Michael Kaiser to the stage, thank you. I hate to disappoint you, Dennis, maybe next year. When Adrienne was told that she was being given this award, she regretted that she could not be in Miami tonight to receive this honor in person, and she asked me to say the following words on her behalf. The arts define a civilization. We learn about Henry VIII, Richard III, and other English kings from Shakespeare. We learn about Boris Godunov, the Russian czar, from opera. We learn our fairy tales like Sleeping Beauty from ballet. Preserving and saving the arts is something that must be done. Three years ago, when I made my gift to the Performing Arts Center, the PAC was in its moment of crisis. I believed that the arts would serve as a beacon of, art, of the arts for future generation, and it still does. Now we see what this world-class facility stands for. It has become a town square for the entire community. It is beloved by the many international performers who have graced its stages and by the audiences who have enjoyed their performances. When my friend Michael Kaiser spearheaded the Kennedy Center's Arts in Crisis program, I was delighted to financially support this vital project. Now, as treasurer of the Kennedy Center and with the establishment of the Adrian Arst Musical Theater Fund, I continue doing whatever I can to keep the arts center stage and out of crisis. 
Thank you, Young Arts, for this honor. I now turn it over to Michael Kaiser to share more with you. Thank you. It's incredibly humbling to be on this stage with people like Liv Ullmann and Desmond Richardson and Bill T. Jones. Um, but I am thrilled to be here today and to share this award with Adrian. It's particularly gratifying to receive this award in 2011 when the Kennedy Center celebrates two very important anniversaries. Next week, on January 20th, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the inauguration of President Kennedy. And in September, we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Kennedy Center, the living memorial to John F. Kennedy. In all of, in all of our work, we are guided by President Kennedy's commitment to the art. Engraved on the walls of our building is his statement, I am certain that after the dust of centuries has passed over our cities, we too will be remembered not for our victories in battle or in politics, but for our contribution to the human spirit. It is in this spirit that I accept this award. Thank you very much. night indeed. The rest of the evening here is about celebration. Celebrating 30 years of discovering excellence in the arts, celebrating our future. In just a few moments, we will cross the street to the beautiful, historic Alfred I. DuPont building. Before that, though, this year's 148 finalists have a special message for our organization's anniversary.